what is it the part about human intelligence that we like have a most fail to replicate with these models? Um, I almost feel like um, just uh, just a lot of it. <laughs> still. <laughs> so maybe one way to think about it. I don't know if this is the the best way, but I almost kind of feel like again making these analogies, imperfect as they are. Um, We've stumbled by with the transformer neural network, which is extremely powerful, very general. You can train transformers on audio or video or text or whatever you want, and it just learns patterns, and they're very powerful, and it works really well. That, to me, almost indicates that this is kind of like some piece of cortical tissue. Uh, it's something like that, because the cortex is famously very um, plastic as well. You can mm -hmm. rewire um, you know, parts of brains, and uh, there was the slightly gruesome experiments with rewiring like visual cortex to the auditory cortex. and. Uh, this animal like learn fine, etc. Um, so I think that this is kind of like a cortical tissue. I think when we're doing reasoning and planning inside the neural networks, so basically doing a reasoning traces um, for thinking models, that's kind of like the prefrontal cortex. Um, and then um, I think we uh, maybe those are like little check marks, <laughs> but I still think there's many uh, brain parts and nuclei that are not explored. So maybe, for example, there's a basal ganglia doing a bit of reinforcement learning when we fine tune the models on reinforcement learning. But you know, you know, where's like the hippocampus? Not obvious what that would be. Some parts are probably not important. Maybe the cerebellum is like not important to cognition. It's thought so. So maybe we can skip some of it. Uh, but I still think there's, for example, the amygdala, all the emotions and instincts. Um, and there's probably like a bunch of other nuclei in the brain that are very ancient that I don't think we've like really replicated. I don't actually know that we should be pursuing, you know, the building of an analog of a human brain. Uh, I'm, again, an engineer mostly at heart. But um, I still feel like maybe another way to answer the question is you're not going to hire this thing as an intern and it's missing a lot of, it's mm -hmm. because it comes with a lot of these cognitive deficits yeah. that we all intuitively feel when we talk to the models. Um, and so it's just like not fully there yet. And you can look at it as like not all the brain parts are checked off yet. Mm. <laughs> this is maybe relevant to the t uh, uh, question of thinking about how fast these issues will be solved. So sometimes people will say about continual learning, look, actually, you could already, you, you could easily replicate this capability just as in-context learning emerged spontaneously as a result of pre-training. Continual learning over longer horizons will emerge spontaneously if the model is incentivized to recollect information over longer horizons or horizons longer than one session. So if there's um, some like outer loop RL, which it has many sessions within that outer loop, then like this continual learning where it uses like, it fine tunes itself or it writes to an external memory or something will just sort of like emerge spontaneously. Do you think, do you think things are like that are plausible? I just, I don't yeah. have really a prior over like yeah, how yeah. plausible is that? How likely is that to happen? I don't know that I fully resonate with that because okay. I feel like these models, when you boot them up and they have zero tokens in the window, they're always like restarting from scratch mm -hmm. where they were. So I don't actually know in that worldview what it looks like uh, because um Again, make, maybe making some analogies to humans just because I think it's roughly concrete and kind of interesting to think through. I feel like when I'm awake, I'm building up a context window of stuff yeah. that's happening during the day. But I feel like when I go to sleep, something magical happens where uh, I don't actually think that that context window stays around. Um, mm. I think there's some process of distillation into weights of my brain. Yeah. Um, and this happens during sleep and all this kind of stuff. We don't have an equivalent for, of that in large language models. And that's, to me, more adjacent to when you talk about continual learning and so on uh, as absent. Yeah. These models don't really have a, this distillation phase um, of taking what happened, analyzing it, obsessively thinking through it, <laughs> um, uh, basically doing some kind of a synthetic data generation process and yeah. distilling it back, back into the weights and maybe having a you know, specific neural net per person. Uh, maybe it's a LoRa. It's not mm -hmm. a full... Uh, yeah, it's not a full weight uh, neural network that's, it's just small, so, some of the small sparse yeah. subset of the weights are changed. But basically, we do want to create ways of creating these individuals that have very long contexts. It's not only remaining in the context window because the context windows grow very, very long. Like maybe we have some very elaborate sparse attention over it. Mm. But I still think that humans obviously have some process for distilling some of that knowledge into the weights. We're missing it. And I do also think that humans um, have some kind of a very elaborate sparse attention scheme, mm. um, which I think uh, we're starting to see some early hints of. Uh, so DeepSeek uh, v3.2 uh, just came out, and I saw that they have like a sparse attention as an example. And this is one way to have very, very long context windows. So I almost feel like we are redoing a lot of the cognitive tricks that evolution came up with yeah. through a very different process. But we're, I think, going to converge on a similar architecture cognitively. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks. <laughs>